is more likely to go into Jahannam. Because he first has to go into Jannah to be able to, it's not like, oh, I'm going to Jahannam, but put these pe seven people in Jannah. Yeah, but can he bring like a non-believer though? No. No? They have to be Muslim. Oh. And it's really easy to become Muslim. How? <laughs> La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah. That's yes. Would it be like harder for like an office to get into Jannah as he does? Yes. It's much harder. You have to A, keep it memorized. Because if you don't keep it memorized, you're in big trouble. B, you have to act upon the Quran because you have it. Yes? Will Christians or Jews ever enter Jannah? Uh, depends on if they were born before or after Rasulullah. So example, Rasulullah was um, in you know 600 AH or in the Gregorian calendar. So maybe there were some Romans who never heard of Rasulullah, but they knew of Isa. And if they follow the true teachings of Jesus, they would enter Jannah. In today's terminology, maybe there's a tribe, there's some African tribes who are completely cut off from Islam. They have no knowledge, they don't even know what TVs, phones, etc. Maybe they don't know what Islam is, maybe Allah will, if they're good, get them Jannah. But at the end of the day, it shouldn't matter to you. Because their decision is for who? For Allah to decide. Sometimes in our brains, we try to justify it. Allah is Rahman, Allah is merciful, He should have mercy. But who are we to decide if He should have mercy or not? Right? We have no... Uh, you can't even make decisions between your siblings. Yeah. Who's right, who's wrong. Right? Yes, Ali. Uh, what do you mean like it's, hard, it's harder for a Hafiz to go to Jannah? Wouldn't it be easier though? Why? I don't know, because like, you memorize the Quran and stuff. No, so, for have, how, how, much, how many surahs have you memorized? I can't remember. Like 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 15, 20? Yeah. Right? Like Could you list years. all of them right now? Could you recite all of them right now without any mistakes? Probably not. That's the problem. Oh. So if I forget an ayah, if I forget, if I don't read the Quran, if I don't act upon the Quran, because I have that knowledge. Some of you may not have that knowledge. So if I don't act on it, I am being willfully ignorant. Some people are just ignorant. Like you don't know, you know how it says, what's the, what's the saying? Um, uh, ignorance is bliss. Ignorance is bliss. If you don't know, you don't know. But if you know and then you ignore, that's the bigger issue. Good? Yes. Won't the ayahs like talk for you on like the day of If you recite them. Uh-huh. For you both. If you yeah. recite them. What is the meaning of the word Quran? <laughs> Not the most repeated. That which is recited repeatedly. Yeah. <laughs> that which is recited repeatedly. So the Quran can come up to you and say, he did it read. So why would I? And he can actually take them to Jahannam. Actually, here's a jiddle. Who's saying, okay, I'm Jahannam, so they can go on Jahannam. Yeah, Allah, Allah, how do they get to Jahannam? They have ties, big non-Muslim. So they have to go to Jahannam. So be more concerned with them dragging you to Jahannam than you dragging them to Jannah. Yeah. Because that is more likely, not because they're bad people, but because they will say, why didn't Ali, why didn't Ibrahim, why didn't Musa, why didn't they help me? Why didn't they say anything? This is a, for the same reason that if I, for whatever reason, I met Ibrahim on the street and I beat him up. Oh, let's just say, <laughs> just pick him up, okay? I beat up Ibrahim, poor guy, he, he looks small, I'm sure he's stronger than me. <laughs> right? <laughs> so I beat Ibrahim up. Ibrahim says, you know what, Abdullah Bhai, you know, he came one time, he, he gave me a lecture on Islam and forgiveness. I forgive him for the sake of Allah. Allah. All right? On the day of judgment, Allah is doing the Hisab Kitab of Ibrahim. Okay? And this is Sahih Hadith. Ibrahim will say, Oh Allah, there's a guy named Abdullah, he beat me up. I want my revenge now. So Allah will ask Ibrahim, how do you want your revenge? Well, oh, see all those good deeds Abdullah has? Add them to mine. So Allah will say, how much did you suffer? And then Ibrahim, there's a video playing of Ibrahim getting beaten up, and him forgiving, and Allah will say, take these 100,000 good deeds. And then Ibrahim will say, that's not enough, I suffered emotional pain. I was embarrassed, right? So Allah will say, okay, take another hundred thousand. But then I won't have any good deeds left. So then Ibrahim is, you know, he's really, he's like, but my emotional pain, like I need retribution. 
So Allah will say, what do you want me to do? Do you want me to give you his sins? Ibrahim will say, no Allah, I don't want his sins, but how do I get revenge now? Because I forgave him for your sake. If Ibrahim had then come after me with his friends, Ali and, what's your name? Ayan. Ayan and Abdullah. Abdu oh, well, <laughs> and Abdullah. And you four had come beat me up. Isaac bin is brother. Like it's even now. Now you can't take anything on the day of judgment. All right? But if he had forgiven me, not taken revenge, completely forgiven me, knowing that Allah is the finer judge, then you can ask him. So what will happen is Ibrahim will say, I want more. Allah will say, He doesn't have any more good deeds left. So Allah will say, He will open a gate. And Ibrahim will see Jannah and doors and palaces, and etc. And Ibrahim will say, what is that? Oh, that's uh, your Jannah. Ibrahim's like, how do I get in there? He's like, I can put you in there, but there's a cost. And Ibrahim will say, tell me the cost. I'm willing to pay whatever the cost is. Allah will say, forgive Abdullah and take him with you into Jannah. And then Ibrahim will say, fair deal. I forgive him, just give me Jannah. And then both of you will go into Jannah. This just shows the rahmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala provided that you have rahmah on others in this life. Allah will not have rahmah on you if you do not have rahmah on others, especially your brothers and sisters. Especially your brothers and sisters. Alright? Because the best of humankind is best to those in their family. So husbands to their wives, wives to their husband, children amongst yourselves. For young to old and old to young. So Musa, who's your elder brother? Ayan. Ayan. So you have to be nice to Ayan and similarly. Yeah. All right? <laughs> and and <laughs> sisters. Yeah, so both of you have to be kind to each other as well. Okay, anything else? Any other questions? Yes. Can you explain how uh, Milad is in like Bidah or something? Like, Good question. Okay, so I'll end with this hopefully, if nobody else has any questions. So, what is a Bidah? Something the Prophet didn't do. Bidah is called an innovation. It is a innovation. There are many things that the Prophet didn't do that we still do. Example, cars. Bidah. Right? Example, building masjids with stone and bricks. That's a bidah. Example, looking at the clock to read namaz. That's a bidah. Namaz e tarabi. You've prayed tarabi before? Yeah. Yeah. That's a bidah. The Surah never did it the way we did it. There was no jamaat. Rasulullah would read his own, the Sahaba would read their own. Hazrat Umar, almost uh, four or five years later after Rasulullah said, why don't we just all get together and read it? That would be much more beneficial. That's how we, the Quran, you know the compilation of the Quran is a bidah. It wasn't compiled at the time of Rasulullah. It was compiled 12, maybe even 20 years at the time of Usman radiallahu ta'ala. You know the, um, the Zabar Zayr Pesh? That wasn't done for years after that. Because everyone was Arab. So everyone knew what it was. So there are good hasana, good bidah, and bad bidah. What are bad bidah? Like listening to Drake. <laughs> <laughs> what is a good bidah pertaining to that? Listening to Nasheed. Hey, Rasulullah used to share and he used to listen to Nasheed. But Nasheed with maybe some background attached to it. Some people say it's a good bidah. Because it's beautiful. Alright? So, Milad is not a bidah. And I'll explain why. Number one. Somebody comes up to Rasulullah and he says, Ya Rasulullah, why are you fasting? And I've seen you that you fast every Monday. Rasulullah, he says, I fast every Monday because Monday is a good day because I was born on a Monday. SubhanAllah. Number one. So he himself is saying it's a good day. Why? And the only thing that made it a good day is because he's born on it. That's number one. Number two, whether you celebrate Milad or not, you never confront anyone. That's their own action. But every Muslim must feel happiness upon the birth of Rasulullah. Must feel happiness upon the birth of Rasulullah. You know what we're doing right now? The Sahaba used to do this in the masjid. So what happened one day? Rasulullah is in his house. The Sahaba are gathered in the masjid, they've made a circle. The way they used to gather is they used to sit in a halaqa, which was a circle. This is different. This is a new, this never used to happen unless it was a khutbah. Rasulullah used to give a khutbah. Otherwise, they always sat in a circle like this. So, Rasulullah is in his house. The, the house is attached to Masjid al-Nabbi. The companions are in Masjid al-Nabbi. Rasulullah comes running out. 
goes to the companions and shakes them. What are you doing? What are you doing? The companions, they say, Ya Allah, we are praising Allah and we're thanking Allah for giving us Islam and for giving us you, Ya Rasulullah. We are, what are we doing here today? We are praising Allah and we're being thankful to Him for giving us our Nabi, Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alihi Wasallam. The Rasulullah, he says, swear by it. Take an oath. What's the oath that many of you take on, by, at school? Wallah. They say, Wallahi. I swear by Allah. So Rasulullah, he says, listen, I don't mean to shock you. I don't, I don't doubt your sincerity. But just a little while ago, Jibreel salam came to me. And Jibreel salam he says, ask me, what are your companions doing? Because Allah is feeling pride amongst his, compan amongst his angels at the action of your companions. So I wanted you to take an oath about what you're doing. So on the day of judgment, Allah will forgive your sins. So this is another reason. And there's many other reasons why. Another example. You know who Abu Lahab is? Yeah. Yeah. Allah says to Abu Lahab, may both of your hands be broken. He used to spit on our Nabi. He used to throw rocks at him. He used to put, you know what um, the feces is? You know what feces yeah. is? Stool on the back of Rasulullah when he was in sajda. So imagine, this is that individual. Abu Lahab, he dies. Okay? Rasulullah has an uncle by the name of Abbas, who is the brother of Abu Lahab. He sees his brother suffering in Jahannam, out of curiosity. What's the lowest level of Jahannam? Like, what is the least punishment in Jahannam? Like shoes made of fire. Correct. Shoes made of fire, and the fire and the heat is so hot that your brain will melt through your nose. That's the least punishment. Meaning one more sin than good. So Abu Lahab is suffering in Jahannam. Abbas says, oh, how is Jahannam? Abu Lahab, he says, Jahannam sucks. And this is today's terminology. Jahannam sucks. It's worse than I could have ever imagined. Except for Monday. Every Monday, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala eases my punishment. And there's nothing to drink in Jahannam except every Monday, these two fingers, there's water that comes out and I drink from that water. Otherwise, there's pus and I have to drink my own pus. So Abbas goes running to Rasulullah. Ya Rasulullah, Ya Rasulullah, Ya Rasulullah, what is this? Abu Lahab used to do this, and he used to do this, and he used to do this. He should be suffering forever in Jahannam. Why is Allah having mercy on him? So Rasulullah, he smiles, and he says, I was born on a Monday. And when I was born, there was a slave girl by the name of Thuwaybah, who used to belong to Abu Lahab. She goes running to Abu Lahab. Oh, Abu Lahab, Abu Lahab, your brother Abdullah, the father of Rasulullah, has had a wonderful baby boy. And he's been named Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. So Abu Lahab took these two fingers and did this out of happiness. MashaAllah, Thwayba, go, you're free. Abu Lahab felt that much happiness and Allah will give him mercy forever in Jahannam every Monday. Imagine how we feel as Muslims who always feel happiness for the birth of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. So it is not a bidah. Okay, there are things that people do that we shouldn't do, like firing guns. People do it, it's a part That's of right. culture. But Rasulullah is peaceful. He taught us peace, and so we advocate peace. Everyone good? Uh, if we can all stand up for salam, inshallah. inshallah.